A warm welcome to your innovation this week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Uketumbi. This edition of the program comes to you from Montreal in Canada. We are here at the CAE facility. CAE is the world's leading supplier of civil flight simulators. Authorities here tell us that simulators are as important as aircraft themselves. Why this is so, you'll get to know as you come along with us on this edition. But first, these background reports. The best known early flight simulation device was the Link Trainer, produced by Edwin Link in Binghamton, New York, USA, which he started building in 1927. He later patented his design, which was first available for sale in 1929. The Link Trainer was a basic metal frame flight simulator, usually painted in its well-known blue color. Edwin Link was also an amateur pilot, but dissatisfied with the amount of real flight training that was available, he decided to build a ground-based device to provide such training without the restrictions of weather and the availability of aircraft and flight instructors. His design had a pneumatic motion platform driven by inflatable bellows which provided pitch and roll cues. An electric motor rotated the platform providing your cues. A generic replica cockpit with working instruments was then mounted on the motion platform. Initially, aviation flight schools showed little interest in this trainer but the situation changed in 1934 when the Army Air Force was given a government contract to fly the postal mail. This included having to fly in bad weather as well as good, for which the U.S. Air Force had not previously carried out much training. During the first weeks of the mail service, nearly a dozen Army pilots were killed. The Army Air Force hierarchy remembered Ed Link and his trainer. Link flew in to meet them at Newark Field in New Jersey, and they were impressed by his ability to arrive on a day with poor visibility due to practice on his training device. The result was that the U.S. AAF purchased six Link trainers and marked the beginning of the world flight simulation industry. A flight simulator is a device that artificially recreates aircraft flight and the environment in which it flies for pilot training, design or other purposes. It includes replicating the equations that govern how aircrafts fly, how they react to applications of flight controls, the effects of other aircraft systems, and how the aircraft reacts to external factors such as air density, turbulence, and wind shear, among others. Sitting here for the instructor, you can reach all part of the, uh, the uh, screen without having to turn or being un uncomfortable. So, so really, the, I mean, the two axes for when we uh, design that kind of chair for the iOS, we have to keep in mind that the instructor uh, passes extensive hours in this chair. Yeah. So the two axes are ergonomy for the instructor when it is, so it needs to be comfortable in the chair, yeah, exactly. he needs to have everything accessible without twisting his body and, and so on. And then ultimately, for functionality reason, he needs to have the perfect visibility on what's going on in the cockpit to be able to catch any uh, things that he wants to bring to the pilots, right, for, for their training. So flight simulation is used for a variety of reasons, including flight training, mainly of pilots, the design and development of the aircraft itself, and research into aircraft characteristics and control handling qualities. Flight simulators employ various types of hardware and software depending on the modeling detail and realism that is required for the role in which they are to be employed. Designs range from PC laptop based models of aircraft systems, so-called part task trainers or PTTS, 
to replica cockpits for initial familiarization to highly realistic simulations of the cockpit, flight controls and aircraft systems for more complete pilot training. It's the level of detail that you put at the gate, the number of trucks, uh, and that's all customizable to the uh, individual actualities. The highest level of flight simulator for training commercial air transport pilots is known as a full flight simulator, or the FFS. And for training military pilots, the highest level is a full mission simulator. The FFS design is agreed by world civil aviation regulatory authorities such as the FAA in the USA and the EASA in Europe and has a motion platform on which the simulator cab is mounted and a visual system that displays the outside world, the OTW. Manufacturing to specification is a key element of this equipment that is as important to a pilot as is or a license. The accounts manager for Europe and Africa at the CAE, Sean Codley, tells us more. So simulators, they're, uh, in a nutshell, they're used to train pilots. Uh, right now, uh, back in the past, the way we train pilots to become professional pilots was to use the actual aircraft. Since then, technology has advanced to the point where we, what we call, we're able to use uh, zero flight time simulators, which means that they could do all the actual training inside a simulator and, and pay a tenth of the price or a, a fifth of the price as they would actually training in a real aircraft. <laughs> Simulator is based on technology. We use the latest, you know, CA prides ourselves on using the latest technology available out there. Uh, we, we invest heavily in research and development to make sure that everything we do is, is cutting edge. Uh, so from visual systems, projectors, to see the visual. So part of a simulator is, you know, you land in an airport, you land in Lagos, for example. We need to represent that visual as a virtual reality, if you would say. Uh, motion, we use motion cues, or we have simulators uh, uh, on motion just like any other roller coaster ride, we, we use motion, uh, you know, high end computers, um, simulated aircraft parts, real aircraft parts, a bit of everything. At the end of the day, create a, a virtual world for flight training, for simulation, for flight simulation. At the end of the day, uh, the goal is to simulate the actual aircraft. So we need, to, uh, we need to make sure that the simulator performs as it would in the air and pilots feel that. So when they train, they know that they're training on a device that's almost identical, if not identical, to the actual aircraft. So we work closely with the original equipment manufacturers, the Boeings, Airbus, even helicopter uh, uh, manufacturers to make sure that we, that we have the data we need or, 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 or the, the information we need in order to simulate those aircraft types. And CAE, one of our key um, our key advantages is that we've built up this knowledge base of simulation, of expertise in creating simulation. So that first initial drive to build one simulator is not easy. Uh, I'll be honest, it takes a lot of, there's a lot of source code, a lot of uh, computer language and code behind that simulator to first get one up and running. So uh, again, you know, we have a long history CAE. Uh, we started 65 years ago, over 65 years ago in, in this business. And this is what we pride ourselves on, is that level of expertise that was built up to create these, these devices that are, again, replicable of the actual aircraft. So I, I would say in a nutshell that it, it's not easy to build a simulator, and it requires a lot of experience, a lot of expertise, and a lot to build up that knowledge base. 12 to 14 months it takes to build from A to Z uh, a simulator. From the day a customer orders a sim to the day we deliver it ready for training, 12 to 14 months. A lot of people think getting a simulator, buying a simulator, just here's a piece of equipment, there you go, and they leave. Well, no, a lot of that has to do with the support required, the continuous maintenance required to keep these things running perfectly. There's a lot of uh, updates required, always routine maintenance, expertise, training. Uh, no, it, it, this, when you're buying a simulator, it's not a just equipment. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a holistic package of services and equipment together to create that, that experience. We've done a lot of work. Uh, re well, it's that, rea it's that realism. Um, you know, it's not just data. It's the way it feels, the vibration in the floor. Again, 
based on my customers who have spoken to me about why they like CAE, it's the level of quality, the level of realism that we bring. There's that little feel in the vibration, the visual. A visual is a big part of training, and the, we just launched actually a new, a new pro, a new technology, a visual technology, called the uh, Tropos XR uh, 6000, and that actually we've got a lot of great feedback. Why? Because it's almost the real thing. So I, I think we would say uh, what I like to say to that answer the question is the fact that we bring the little. It's those little things that make the difference between making it more real and making it less real. We'll take a break on the program. Aviation This Week will return shortly.